Let's talk about Google. In fact, we don't even use this term called search. We always say, let's Google it. Google is so important, right? Now, the only thing Google does is indexes all the pages on the internet, not all the pages, but then the pages which are there for the indexing. Now, why do we need Google? Example, let's say if I want to search something on the internet, let's say I want to download a JDK version. Since I'm working on Java projects, let's say I want to download JDK. Now, in that case, I will just go to Google and I will search for JDK download. Now, of course, Google is not having JDK download, right? In fact, JDK software. The software is available on some other website, not one, multiple website. One of it is Oracle. So basically, it uses some algorithms to give you best results and then it tries to give you all the result on the first page itself and that's why we don't even go to the second page, right? In fact, it's been a long time I've even clicked on this two button here. Basically, you get everything what you wanted on the first page. If you don't get it, we change our query, right? So the idea is Google helps you to collect all the data from the internet. Now, the thing is, Google is working in Web 2.0. So basically, the world which we are living now is a, is a world where everything is centralized. So the services provided by this company is a centralized service. Example, Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, they all provide a centralized service. We want to move towards the decentralized internet and that is possible with the help of blockchain. So basically we are saying, hey, instead of using a central service, let's use a decentralized internet. So basically instead of having data on one server, we can have data on multiple servers. And these machines, basically we call them as nodes, right? This is basically I'm trying to create a blockchain network. And example of this networks, this type of networks is, let's say you, you might have heard about Bitcoin network. Uh, maybe you have heard about uh, Ethereum network. And one of my favorite is Polkadot. Now, these are all the networks which we have, right? Now, what type of data you stored here? So, example, in the world of uh, Web 2.0, so you try to store your data in a database. It can be a structured, unstructured, I mean, SQL, no SQL databases. But let's say if you talk about the blockchain, how do you store data? So, basically, you store your data in a block. So, you store your data in these blocks. Now, it will be multiple blocks and all these blocks are created after a particular time. Now, based on which network I'm talking about, Bitcoin will have a different timeline, Ethereum, Polkadot, every, every network here will have a different time for this new block creation. Example, Bitcoin takes approximately 10 minutes for one block. Now, whenever you have this block and all these blocks are basically chained, right? So these blocks are chained and that's why we call them as block chain, right? Because these are chained. In fact, the earlier term for this was chain of blocks, but blockchain looks good, right? So the, what's the advantage of doing using blockchain here? So whenever you store data in a blockchain, it gives you one thing, which is immutability, right? So all your data is immutable. So once you store your data there, no one can change it. And that's what build trust. So one of the things which we are missing in this world is trust, right? Uh, and we can achieve that with the help of blockchain again. I guess my image is hiding the another block here, which is here, I, ignore that. So basically you can have multiple blocks, right? And all this block will have a number. Now, the first block, we normally call it as a Genesis block, right? And the last block is currently created. So the block which is mentioned here is actually just created, which is hiding in behind me. You can see that's a block I'm talking about, right? It's, it's there, it's there, the block is there. So that sounds good, right? Blockchain is great. It's immutable and it is decentralized. So you all these nodes are not centralized nodes, they are decentralized nodes. Now, the only problem here we have is Every network will have a different blockchain and this blockchain will not have one or two blocks. Let me just show you how many blocks we can have. So to explain that, what I will do is I will take you to this Ethereum Explorer. And if you click on the first link, since we are using Google, it will give you the perfect result and see the number of blocks. So the block number I'm talking about is this here. It's around 14 million block number we have. So the current block, which is created one minute ago is 14 million. Now the crazy part is, if you want to search something in this blocks, so the image which I've drawn earlier, we are what's having only four blocks. We're talking about 14 million block. How will you search your data in this block? Of course, this block will have transaction, right? How will you store your data? And that is a tricky part. Now, if you want to search the data, it will take huge amount of time. So basically we have to do indexing. So we have to search something like Google for the blockchain. And that's where we have, in fact, before that, I have to show you one more thing. 
which is Polkadot. So if I go to Polkadot Explorer and if I click on this one, you can see the number of blocks we have there. Uh, we have approximately, this is the block, the latest block which I'm talking about. And it creates block in every minute, I guess. Every minute we have two to three blocks. We can see the number later. But see, see the number of blocks here. How will you search your data in this thing? And for that, we have a solution. So what's the solution? This, my friend, this is the solution, the subquery network. So basically using subquery, you can index everything. Now the question is why we have to index? See, the problem is as a developer or maybe as a consumer, let's say we have a user here and this user want to access a web app. So normally when you talk about an app in the world of blockchain, we call them as DAP. So as a DApp developer, it is your job to connect to the particular blockchain. So let's say this is a blockchain, right? To connect to a particular blockchain and fetch the data. So of course, you can't actually search for this data at runtime. The example, let's say if a user fires a query, user want to search for a particular thing and this DApp will search in a blockchain. It will take huge amount of time. We don't want to waste that time, right? We want it to be done instantly. In that case, as a DApp developer, you need to index all this data in your server, in your service, and that will be time consuming. In fact, first of all, you have to write application, you have to write some extra feature. And as a developer, I always believe that you should focus only on the use case, the your use case, not on this extra thing. So this indexing problem can be solved with the help of subquery. So if I take you to the subquery network, what it says, so subquery is basically for developers to create the products for the decentralized future. And the thing is, you know, it's actually taking a lot of time to move from web 2.0 to 3.0 because we have to change so many things and there are some features which are missing. And subquery is helping with that feature, one of the features which is indexing. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about the blockchain like Polkadot, Avalanche and Cosmos. So subquery supports all those. And if you want to know more, you can just read this white paper, which is very beautifully written. And in fact, we'll be making more videos on subquery, how exactly subquery works and how about creating your own subquery project. And subquery also supports that once you have made a project, you can deploy it on the uh, subquery network itself. So they also provide you managed services. You can see we have it here. So subquery is great uh, for the indexing of the Polkadot. In fact, it supports multiple blockchain. So let me in the comment section how excited you are for subquery. Uh, it's a very great tool because it provides you with the indexing of the blockchain. In fact, in my machine, I've already written a code from the documentation and I was able to fetch all the data in my machine. And it, it actually makes sense because if I make an application, I can directly use the central service. I know it sounds weird to have a central service because we are talking about decentralization, but using subquery network, they are also moving towards the decentralized indexing. So that's it. See you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section. Bye-bye. Polkadot for our for the for the examples.